Okay, you have selected the help button, which takes you to the background and navigation of the model help routine. My name is Marty Wanalista. I'm with the University of Central Florida. And the model itself has uh, been developed over a six-year period of time. And the purpose of this help button is to take that six years and try to assist you in the design and analysis of stormwater BMPs for nutrient removal. We're talking about nutrient removal and only nutrient removal in this model. So uh, the first thing you'd want to know then is that it'll be very helpful for you when examining situations in which you need nutrient removal. I'm also going to define input data required for the BMP trains model. And then I want you to understand, or by checking into this uh, help screen, you're going to understand why it's used and how it's used as a basis for design and review, especially for permits and mass reduction calculations. This is uh, accompanied by a user's manual, and the user's manual itself uh, is available and was developed with the uh, help of the Florida Department of Transportation and many of the sister agencies, state agencies, as well as the water management districts around the state over the period of that six years. And this is just a screen capture of what you're looking at as you go further into executing the BMP trains model. The user's manual, as well as the model, can be downloaded from the website www.stormwater.ucf.edu. The version we're talking about is version 6, and the reason why I'm going to spend a few minutes on that saying it's version 6, is that we constantly update the model depending on the needs of the professional community and depending on the type of questions we get. So uh, we may have more BMPs that we may want to add to the model in the future, and therefore you may see different versions. So you're encouraged to go back to the stormwater.ucf.edu website and see if there's a new version out there. Also, I mentioned the user's manual, and it's available, and you're encouraged to, uh, to look at that, as well as to examine the help buttons within the BMP trains model. The user's manual discusses in quite a bit of detail what the uh, background information was, background models that are used across the world. And we examine these models to pick out the very best features in these models and then to adapt those features to the BMP trains model for nutrient removal within the state of Florida. This is a state of Florida based model. However, we have noted that it's been used in other states with similar climactic conditions. Texas has used it. Delaware and Maryland has also used the manual. There's been over 2,500 downloads as of January 29th of this year, uh, year 2014. So you can imagine that some of those downloads came from folks outside of the state. Um, comparison of the model based on BMPs alone, best management practices, shows that the BMP trains model has explicitly identified a BMP in every category that others, other models have except for wetlands. Now the reason why we haven't identified wetlands within this model as a specific BMP and showed its removal effectiveness is that wetlands are not commonly accepted as treatment methods within the state of Florida. Nevertheless, and having said that, the, use, the, um, the model itself has a user-defined option that you can go in and define what those removals are. So, not, I don't have it checked here on this comparison, However, you do know you could input data like that from a BMP that has not been accepted, totally accepted, by state agencies. Some agencies still accept wetlands. They have in the past, and they're still doing it. But not all agencies do, and that's the reason why it's not a common BMP identified within the model. Others that you may want a user button for, a uh, user identified a button for, would be such things as uh, chemical treatment, as an example, okay? Or the, uh, the pretreatment sedimentation devices, okay? 
such as the uh, nutrient removal box or baffle boxes and so forth. But when you take a look and examine as, as you go through the model, you'll see that all of the acceptable methodologies, all the acceptable BNPs, acceptable by state agencies and local agencies in the state of Florida, have been identified and placed in the model. Now, navigating through the model is, is fairly simple. There's a click here to start button, and I'm going to go right to that. This is right online now. I'm, I'm using this off, my, uh, off an online system, so you can do it online, or you can do it right from your own laptop. We encourage you to download this information, the BMP model, to your laptop. Navigation through the model is simple. <laughs> In fact, at the very first sheet, it says click here to start. So if you were to do that, you'd go right to the general site information page. Every page has a volume description on it. This is volume 6, okay, or version 6 of, of the BMP trains model. And when you make screen captures of each one of these spreadsheet pages, it'll always have the volume on it or the version. And that version is the one that the water management districts will trace back against to make sure you're using the correct and most up-to-date version when you do your submittals. All the other buttons, as an example, I could say view a zone map. This happens to be a, a page which says select the appropriate meteorological zone input. So if you want to select the, the zone input that you have and you don't know what zone you are in, you just click the zone button. And it takes you right to that zone button. And let's say I'm in uh, Tallahassee and I don't know what zone I'm in, but that looks like zone one, doesn't it? Yes. Okay, by definition, zone two is this green one going down the center of the state. Okay. Go back to general information. If I wanted, it also asks for the mean annual rainfall. I can go to the mean annual rainfall map. And depending on where I am, maybe Tallahassee or so, I can figure out where the contours of equal elevation are. If I want an expanded point of a map for there. Look at that. I got to expand it. There's Tallahassee that I'm pointing to. And there's 59 inches. There's 58. Wettest part of the state of Florida is up in the Panhandle region. These are mean annual rainfalls. Down around Niceville tends to be the wettest part. I can go back to the main map or I can go back to the general information page. After I've introduced or and entered in the numbers, for the mean annual rainfall in the meteorological zone, I go to type of analysis, and I can put in the type of analysis I want and then efficiencies if needed. Right now I'm interested in just showing you the navigation. I can navigate to the watershed page. Notice there's help buttons on all these on most of the pages. Some of the pages are are, are self-explanatory. I can go to stormwater treatment analysis. I can pick a treatment type, such as a retention. I can go back to stormwater treatment. I can click on all these buttons will take you someplace, like catchment and treatment results. OK, I can go back to the stormwater treatment analysis, general site page. I can even go back to the introduction. Now, one thing that you'll hear many times when you do the help buttons and, and and work with this model is there something that says reset the input for the stormwater treatment analysis. So if you had entered a lot of data like for watershed data here or if you have gone to uh, oh, that, let's say uh, back to the journal information page where you had entered in rainfall data and you're going to have a new site to examine all you have to do is go to the reset input and it will reset the whole page. It'll zero out all the input data and all of the output data. The other thing that is very interesting about the program too is that if you can read the, if you can understand the color blue and red on, 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 on the screens of, of your computer, uh, bloom is always the input data and red is always the calculated or your computed data. Okay? Or, or carryover data. Like carry over some data that's already been calculated someplace else. So the navigation, again, is quite simple. Just go to the buttons, hit the button, 
and you can navigate around. And uh, this one here says view catchment configurations. Okay, go back to the watershed. Go to here. Yeah, go to general. Yeah, go to the introduction. Okay, so just by hitting the buttons, you you can navigate around. Um, the help button on each page will take you to the information related to that page. And on this beginning page, you, you have three of the help buttons. Just to go over and restate what I had just stated with the navigation, you'll be asked to introduce, or uh, as input data, you'll be asked to put in data for rainfall and the type of effectiveness analysis. I picked zone two for this screen capture. I picked 50 inches. Uh, this is uh, around the center part of the state. For specifying the removal efficiency for type of analysis, you can do BMP by itself or net efficiency, or you can specify removal effectiveness. So there's three ways. Specifying removal effectiveness, just look at the BMP and the net effectiveness. Okay, if I want to specify the removal effectiveness, you, can, you, have, you have to put in a nitrogen removal and a phosphorus removal effectiveness in that order. So nitrogen's first. Phosphorus is second. Rainfall distributions, what we had just looked at, very easy to get to. Uh, and it's important for me to tell you about this now because rainfall is not always, the annual rainfall is not the same across the state. The wettest part of the state tends to be up in the panhandle, especially around Niceville. And the driest part is down around the Keys. 38 inches a year down in the Keys, 66, up to 66 or more in the Panhandle region. But also there's a distribution of rainfall events which then determines what the effectiveness is. Obviously, if you have a pond and you've, you're going to store the first inch of runoff in the pond, but it takes two days to drain out and it rains the second day, that's going to have some effect on the efficiency of that pond operation because it doesn't have the full capacity to store a whole one inch. So because of the rainfall distribution across the state, we not only have a difference in annual rainfall volumes, but we have a difference then in, uh, I'll just go back to this, it have, we have a difference then in the inter-event dry period times. Watershed catchment inputs, here's an example, we have many different pre-land and post-land use developments. I have captured a screen capture going from a multifamily to a highway. It's a short stretch of highway. It's only 0.55 acres. I have a pre-development non-DCIA, which I've captured at 80. We're going to a post-development ultra-urban situation where we have 100% DCIA percentage. And then the estimated area for the BMP is only about 0.03 acres. And frequently we get this in, in, such, in highway situations and in many other situations where we may not have enough room to do a BMP, uh, but we, then we may have to go to something uh, that, that's a little bit more, uh, let me say, uh, uh, applicable, which would be maybe putting a bunch of BMPs in, in, in series. If you put a bunch of these BMPs in series, you have very many, you have very many options to pick from. In fact, here shows uh, three different catchments in series. Here shows four different catchments in parallel. Okay, so maybe we're interested in the amount of mass being discharged to this uh, water body, this uh, so-called WIBIT or uh, a watershed action management area, and we have four different uh, discharges in there, and we would like to know how can we limit the mass, total mass coming in by putting BMPs in these four areas. Continuing on with this, there's various other options. Of course, you always have the single option. You may have uh, two options uh, in, in series. You may have two options in series with one um, in, uh, in parallel, like I show down here, or two in series with another one coming in. So there are 14, 14 different ones, plus you could have three BMPs in, within each catchment, as long as those BMPs are in series. So you could have three BMPs in series and up to 14 different catchment configurations. That gives you a lot of opportunities 
And as you're working through the model, you should set this up beforehand, or at least have a good idea of what your system configuration looks like before you get into it. And thus, when going through the catchment inputs, what the data you have here, you may have various different catchments that you're working on, and you'll be introducing various data for each for each one of these for each one of the, these these catchments. Okay. What you get once you put in the catchment data, and you know your meteorological region, you'll get loading results, the red numbers. It'll tell you what the pre-development and post-development nitrogen and phosphorus loadings are. However, you do have the option of changing the default EMC or event mean concentration values. So if any, you want to make any changes to the default values, you can do that, and you can overwrite them here. And once you overwrite, of course, those EMC values will continue on for the rest of the program. The default values that we now have will always appear once you click on that land use, always appear on your screen. However, they are also listed within the model separately in a separate tab. And this is just an example of the different EMC values that you have. We find that uh, folks typically want to change EMC values. If they do that, you make sure that you have that approved by the regulatory agencies uh, be before you go through the uh, details of, of the calculations and specification of the BMP that you want. We also show that there's a, navigating through, there's a button that will give you the methodology for calculating required treatment efficiencies, how retention works, how harvesting works, how um, a green roof method has a green a green roof methodology in there, and again these are all based on the principles that we have basic principles that there are inter event dry periods between rainfall events and that's expressed back when we first start talking about the different rainfall zones across the state. One example I'll put that I'll run through very quickly. This is a curve which reflects the treatment efficiency as a function of the retention depth. In this case, I'm going to treat 1.43 inches of water, and I'm going to get 80% removal. This is for a meteorological zone. If you change zones, you'll get a different result if you specify a retention depth. The methodology for wet detention follows the same underlying principles, and that is that this is the curve for, in this case, Phosphorus removal, and in this over here on the right-hand side, is, is for nitrogen removal. And that's plotted against detention time, which is in days, and that's the average annual, average annual uh, retention time. The BMPs that are available to you are all in button format, and uh, we've already sh shown that earlier. You can get the results by simply going to the uh, catchment and treatment summary results button. Reproducing again the retention curve, that's underlying retention curve for that meteorological zone. You have a maximum retention that's plotted on this axis for all events in a year, and then this is the treatment efficiency, 80%. In many cases, there may not be sufficient area for one retention basin. We may have to use BMPs in series. Remember, for each catchment, we could have three BMPs in series. That's the way the model is set up. If we had a pervious pavement section and we treated 0.6 inches of every rainfall event, we would get 50% removal. If we then put in another BMP, which is called an exfiltration basin, for 0.5 inches, we'd get 40% removal. Now, this is for a standalone system. Okay. Also, the pervious pavement was for a standalone. We went to uh, exfiltration. It's a standalone system. If you put them in series, you'd actually treat 1.1 inches, okay? 0.6 by the pervious pavement, exfiltration 0.5, and that efficiency turns out to be 70% because 70 will capture 70% of the runoff from the rainfall in that year. We're not going to capture 50 plus 40 or 90 percent. We're only going to capture 70 percent because you have to stay with the underlying 
yearly efficiency curves for that region. If you had another, if you added another one like a swale, that swale would get you an additional 10% removal, and we would get basically 80% removal now. We went from 70 with the pervious pavement exfiltration. By adding a swale, we get 10, we get 10 more units removed, and that adds up then to 80%. And you can see it easily with a box diagram because you have 100 coming in. You've removed 50. That means you have 50 going out. You have 40% efficiency in the next one. That means 20. You know you, you have you have you have 20 coming out. 40% of 50. Yet that's uh, removed 20. You have 30, which continues down to the swale. 30, 33% of 30 is 10. So basically, you get 80% removal. Uh, out of 100 load coming in, you have 20 load going out, and you have removed 80%. You cannot add the efficiencies of 50, 40, and 33 together and get 123.5. That's obviously incorrect, right? Obviously incorrect. So you just got to go ahead and, and, and add these up. All right, with that in mind, then the conclusions are that the BMP trains model can use the size treatment systems based on average annual efficiency, no cost to the user. The average annual effectiveness is site specific, incorporating rainfall conditions, impervious cover, soil conditions, type of land use, and of course the type of the BMP. And you can do this either in series or parallel. And the estimates, the program will make sure the estimates stay true to the underlying rainfall and catchment characteristics.